Welcome back to another video right here on Free Will Photos. Today we're going to be editing a photo of what I think is a crane. I don't know my birds that well, but it was a bird that was at a stream by my house and it was one, it's the largest bird that I've ever seen by my house. Uh, but two, it was just something that caught me by surprise while I was on a photo walk. And I said, you know what? I'm going to take some photos of this bird. I think it was hunting for some food and I tried to capture it while it was trying to, you know, pick up a fish out of the stream, but I never got any of those shots. Nonetheless, I did get a shot that I think is worth editing or at least something that we're going to be editing today. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into the computer and take a look at the photo inside of On One Photo Raw 2024. So here we are inside of the computer, and this is the shot that I was referencing. And I think it came out pretty decent. You know, it is what it is. I've already activated Brilliance AI, and I had to mess around and fine tune it uh, because I don't know if I oh, guess I should probably click on the On One Photo Raw. Uh, here's what I came into the editing bay with. And this is a challenge with all raw photos. I felt like I wanted something a little bit more contrasty. This one is not very contrasty. I think I did good with the overall exposure, but I did have to tweak it a little bit. And you can see I pushed Brilliance AI a lot further than I normally do. And I didn't do anything with the color amount. Uh, and I even changed the method over to AI match, all right? Those are the only things that I'll really point out. If you're not familiar with what that is, then let me know in the comment section. I'll make a dedicated video that talks about Brilliance AI and changing the method uh, and what that really does to the image. But I found that AI match got me to the contrasted look that I was going for in this overall shot. And now it's time for me to kind of make the colors a little bit more popish or poppy, if you will. And that's where we're going to spend the majority of our video time today. So I'm going to come over to effects and whenever I think about modifying color, the first thing I think about is a color enhancer. And that should be everyone's thought. Don't worry about the color adjustment. Use the color enhancer. It's going to give you the most bang for your buck. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on foliage because I feel like I want these greens to pop a little bit more, but I don't want them to be like overly vibrant saturated green all right so i'm just going to pull back on the opacity and i think that does quite well and you would think green is the only color in this particular image but we actually have some color information that's down here in the water and i want to modify that as well so we're just going to call this greens adjustment and then we're going to add another color enhancer and I'm going to increase the vibrancy and you can see that there's these yellow tones that pop down here in the water and that's what we're going to modify. So I'm going to hit the letter M on my keyboard just so that way we're only going to work in that area and I'll work with the colors, the, the warmer tones that are up at the top of the image here in a little bit. But I'm going to go with a gradient and I'm just going to click here and we can see that it is now only over the bottom portion of our image, which is what I want. So to get rid of this overlay, I'll just go back to my zoom tool by hitting Z on my keyboard. Uh, I wish on one would fix that where you when you bring the mouse back over to the adjustments that the overlay would go away, but it's not fixed. So it is what it is. Uh, nonetheless, let me go ahead and turn this adjustment off and on so you can see that it's just adding some color and warmth down here to the bottom. And I really appreciate that. Now, I'm going to pull back on the vibrance because I'm actually going to pull up on the temperature slider. And I want to warm this whole bottom section up just a little bit here. So if I turn this off and turn it on, you can see that it's just adding a level of warmth to the bottom of my overall image. And I kind of like what it's doing there. So now I'm just going to increase the saturation just a touch. And I think that that looks pretty 
pretty good. Maybe pull down on the vibrance. And it's always good to turn these things off and on. And you can just see what's happening in the overall image. Now, there is an obstruction in this overall photo that I don't care for. And it's this thing right here. I'm not gonna try to remove it using the magic eraser or sending this into Photoshop. Instead, I'm just gonna use the crop tool and I'm going to pull up until I get to about here and I'll probably bring this down because I want the reflection of the bird and maybe something like so. I think that this branch can be of foreground interest at the top. I like the leading in from the bottom with the water up to the bird and putting the bird on this particular uh, left third, if you will, kind of traps him into the frame and it makes you wonder like, well, what is going on back here? So I am going to fix that here in a little bit, but I just wanted to crop this in so I get rid of a majority of that distraction. I just personally didn't care for that subjective crop. The, where I was to capture this image, I just couldn't get rid of that thing physically. I couldn't move. So it is what it is. Maybe that's something where you can use one of those generative AI uh, tools to add something that would be more appropriate. Um, I just don't have that at least not in fo on one photo raw. Okay, so now what I wanna do is really just fix this little warm toned area down here. So I'm just gonna crank up on the saturation and I'm going to, so I can see what I'm doing, and I'm going to probably move this more over towards the yellows and maybe even just brighten this up. And you can see what I'm getting out of this little area down here, uh, which I think is really cool. Now, too much, so I'll back off on the saturation. And then maybe come to the yellows and increase the saturation there, as well as the, bi the brightness, not the vibrance, and probably push these more towards orange. So that way there's like that golden reflection going on. So, Again, turning this off and turn it back on. You can see it's just warming up the bottom of the image and I really, really like that. So we'll call this bottom warm. And then we'll add another adjustment. This time it's gonna be a color enhancer that we're going to impact the top portion of the image. So I'm gonna hit the letter M to get my masking bug. I am going to click on linear bottom this time, click up here. It's going to apply that on the top of my image, which is really good. And I am going to increase the warmth and you'll start to see those tones just get a little bit warmer, making them a little bit more vibrant. And I'm not gonna go like crazy with it up here. Uh, primarily because I am going to add an additional filter to, to this image. So I'm not going to go crazy with it. Um, let's go to our oranges. If I increase this, maybe we'll get something like that. And maybe move this more towards the orange. And this is all stylistic choice. Uh, you do what you think makes sense for your own photos, all right? So we'll call this top portion or top color, top warm tones. There we go, top warm colors. Tones don't have warmth. Anyway, not going to get into that. Uh, so now, if I hit the Z key again, here's what we came into the editing bay with, and here's where we are right now. I think that we're moving along quite well. So now what I want to do is add in a sun flare. And 
this is just something that's going to help explain why he's overly or the bird is overly bright. Okay. That's the only reason why I'm adding the sun flare. I want this to make sense to why the bird is so bright. So let's see what sun flare is worth putting into this image. Um, and we'll make it all work out quite well. So I feel like number three or number one, uh, I'll go with number three because I do like the fall off that is over here, but obviously way too intense. And I'm just going to push that down just a touch and I'm actually going to reposition it. So instead of it being as close as it is right there, I'm actually going to pull this all the way like out of the frame almost and make it to where it's just barely peeking through the top there. Okay. Uh, and then we can pull down on some of that brightness because I want it to be bright enough to know that it's there, but I don't want it to be an eyesore or a distraction to the overall image. Uh, and you know, this, image is very busy to begin with. So we may need to do something to fix that as well to really hone us in on the bird. But I think that that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and turn that off and turn it on. And you can see it just adds a little bit of overall warmth to the image. And I really enjoy adding sun flares to my bird photos when it's appropriate. So now what I think I need to do is really, I probably shouldn't use the tone enhancer. I should probably do this under local adjustment, but whatever. I'm going to use the tone enhancer for this particular image. And I'm going to pull down on the highlights until I start to see that bird get recovered a little bit and maybe even pull down on some exposure here. And I actually like what this is doing to the overall image. So maybe I'll do something like that. Uh, and I didn't even expect to, to do that. So it is what it is. Uh, so now we're just going to go ahead and add in some dynamic contrast. And I feel like that should be under the sun flare because like, why would the sun have all this contrast built into it? Uh, but I digress. So let's go ahead and open up the dynamic contrast, turning it off and turning it on. You can see what it does to the overall image, but I feel like I don't need it in the water and maybe not so much on the top here. So what I'm going to do is grab my masking bug and I am going to Actually, I'm going to grab my brush tool and then we'll open up the properties and invert this so it's nowhere on the image. I'm going to make a larger brush here. Hit Shift X to jump over to the paint in option and still on a lower opacity. I'm just going to paint this in over the trees. So large brush stroke just a little bit there. And I may lift up, do one more pass over just the top there, given a little bit of definition. Uh, but now I'm going to come over to the bird and I am going to add this to the bird. And I am going over the bird a few times here. Not perfect. Uh, it's all good. If I hit the letter O, you can see kind of what I did there. And I'm okay with that overall. Turn it off and turn it on. It just adds a little bit of dimension to the overall image. And that's what I'm going for when it comes to that. So now what I'm noticing is I probably should really hone the attention into the bird a little bit more. And one of my favorite ways of doing that is with the lens blur tool. And I'm going to go ahead and add a vignette to this. So grab my masking bug and I'm going to go with 
uh, center. Oh, I need to grab the vignette, center, click. So that way I am adding this in the area that I want it to be. And then I'll just pull this out so it blends quite well. Maybe tighten it up a little bit on the bird. Let's go back to the brush tool. And I think it's a little too strong. So we'll just go ahead and pull that down. And this should be over the top of everything uh, to include that um, solar flare or sun flare. And we'll just have to play around with this until it gets about where it ought to be. Maybe something around there. So I'm liking that. I think that I can work with that. Uh, maybe pull down on the brightness because, you know, that's one of my favorite things to do with this particular tool. Yeah, I think that that, that worked out uh, quite well. You know, it, I don't know. I think it worked out quite well. Here's what we came into the editing bay with. And here is the final result that I think I am pleased with. Um, and it's just something that I wanted to edit and see what I can do. Hopefully you found value in this particular tutorial. If you did, smash the like button. If not, that's okay. Let me know in the comment section what you would have done to this particular image, because I think that there are a lot of different directions this photo could have gone in. And until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.